Hi everyone, this is Matt Show and Intro Stats, and today we're looking at the topic of uh, the Null and Alternative Hypothesis. So we're looking at uh, introducing the start of hypothesis testing, so it's a new unit for us. We're kind of getting into this idea of a hypothesis test and, and uh, how, to, how that works out. So let's get started. So let's start with this idea of a hypothesis test, since this is what our whole, this whole unit is about, hypothesis testing. So think of a hypothesis test as a procedure for testing a claim about a population. So people oftentimes say things about the population all the time in newspaper articles, in magazine, online articles. They're always saying things about what they think is true about what's going on out there in the world around us. Um, but how true is what they're saying? I mean, is, there say, is, is what they're saying in the article um, could be true, or is it really wrong? Well, a hypothesis test is a procedure for determining or testing a claim about the population. It also gives us a way of judging evidence. Uh, how much evidence do we have for, for uh, what they're saying? So... But it is a, a quite a long procedure. Hypothesis test does take a, quite a few steps. I can't teach it to you sort of in one day. You know, I, I have to sort of do little steps at a time. So we'll kind of be learning the basics of the pieces of a hypothesis test. And eventually we'll get to the point where we can put all the pieces together and actually do a hypothesis test from start to finish. Okay? So when you're talking about uh, a hypothesis test, one of the first things you want to identify is what's the claim, right? What did the person say uh, about the population, or what does the person think is true about the population? So our population claim, what someone thinks is true about the population. Um, so when you're reading the article or you're reading something and they say something about a population, what do they actually think is true? Now sometimes they'll give you an opposing view and sometimes they don't. Uh, but we basically want to identify what was the claim, what was the person, what did the person uh, think was true about the population. Now, um, so let's take a look at uh, these ones real quick and see if we can kind of figure out what the claim is. That's always the start. What's the claim? Right? So what's the claim? Okay, so this one says, uh, example says, a population percentage of people that have side effects to a medicine used to be 4%. Now we think it's higher. So let me ask you a question. Which of the two, they, they said it used to be 4%, but now they think it's higher. Which one do they actually think is true right right now? Do they think it's still 4% or do they think it's higher? Sounds like they think it's higher, right? The, the uh, population premium used to be 4%. Again, sometimes if you read just the first sentence of an article or something, you might have a wrong view about what their claim really is. Always read the whole thing before you try to decide what their claim is. What do they really think is true? Sounds like they think that it's higher. So I'm going to write population percentage would be a population proportion. So we could use uh, P for population percentage or we could use uh, pi. My classes use pi. So pi is higher. Higher means greater than, greater than uh, 4%. So again, I'm going to write that as a decimal, and that would be my claim. So I, I usually what I like to do is I write the word claim next to it. Claim. Okay? So being able to identify what do they actually think is true. Now, a couple things about this that I want to mention. When you're doing a hypothesis test, always put, if you're doing a one population hypothesis test, always put the letter on the left side and the number on the right side. Yes, I know mathematically saying that 0.04 is less than pi is true, but um, it would, this is not the way, that's not the way computer programs are set up. The computer programs for one population are always set up with the letter on the left and the number on the right. And you do want to write a greater than, a greater than looks like an arrow pointing to the right. I don't know if you notice that, it looks like the, the, the tip of an arrow pointing to the right. So greater than or higher or increase should always be a greater than pointing to the right. Again, the letter, the population parameter on the, on the left, and the number on the right. So that's important with the way you write it, because this is the way the computers are going to interpret it. Let's look at another claim. Many people thought that the population mean average normal body temperature was, is 98.6. 
Evidence now suggests it is lower. Hmm. Okay, so kind of another thing, right? If I just read the first sentence, I may think, oh, my claim is 98.6. But I don't think that's what they really think is true. They kind of think that it's lower, right? It used to be 98.6. When I was growing up, people always told me that normal body temperature was 98.6, but now uh, evidence now suggests that it's lower. So it sounds like they think it's actually lower. So that would be less than. Now this was a population mean average. So if you remember the letter for population mean average, it's the Greek letter mu, right? Greek letter mu. In our last chapter we talked about some of those famous letters and stats. The Greek letter mu kind of looks like a U with a little tail on the left. And it's less than or lower, so less than looks like an arrow pointing to the left. It's a good way to, to remember it. And 98.6, this is not a percentage, this is degrees Fahrenheit. So again, I want to go ahead and leave it as 98.6. Don't try to mess with that. It's not a percentage that you need to convert. This is quantitative data. And again, I notice I wrote the, um, I wrote the letter on the left and the number on the right for one population. Okay? Um, all right, so now we got, this would be our claim, right? Our claim. Okay, what about this third one here? So it says standard IQ tests have a population mean average of 100, right? Standard I, uh, have population mean average of 100. Um, okay, but that's it? That's all they said? Standard, standard IQ tests have a population mean average of 100, okay. Well, it didn't say this must be the claim if that's all they said, right? Um, so. Let's think about it for a second, okay, well, they didn't say more than 100, didn't say at least 100, didn't say at most 100, didn't say uh, less than 100, right? It just said 100. So that's like a classic equal to claim. So sounds like, again, they're using a population mean average, so it's the Greek letter mu again. So mu is equal to 100. And again, that's going to be my claim. That's what they, they think is true. Right. Is that okay? So a claim is what you have to read it and kind of figure out what do they think is actually true about the population. Now, from this claim, we can now develop the null and alternative hypothesis. Okay? Um, always try to do your claim first, though, before you try to figure out the null and alternative hypothesis. Um, so a null hypothesis. So a null hypothesis is a statement about the population that involves equality. It also can be a statement about no change, no effect, or no relationship. Um, those things really go with equality, though. If you have, if you have uh, equal to, sort of shows not related. We'll kind of get that into that later. Uh, the alternative hypothesis. A statement about the population that does not involve equality. So not something that does not have an equal to part. Um, it can also be a statement involving there is significant change or significant effect or there is a relationship. That's always an, a, an alternative hypothesis. Now obviously we don't want to write null hypothesis over and over again or alternative hypothesis over and over again. So we have symbols. So the symbol for a null hypothesis again, a statement about the population that has an equal to part, would be H0. They put a little zero, capital H, with a little subscript zero next to it. So H0 or H0 is the null hypothesis. The alternative hypothesis, a statement about the population that does not have equal, um, is again uh, denoted by sometimes as a capital H with a tiny little subscript A next to it. Some stat books you'll see it as a H with a little 1 next to it. So it could be HA or H1, depending on what stat book you're looking at. I prefer HA. I usually use HA in my classes. Okay, so how do I figure out what's the null and what's the alternative? Okay, well, again, one of the, here's sort of um, um, the, the steps to kind of doing a, a figuring this out. Always write down the claim first. Now try to figure out the opposing view. Sometimes in the, in the article they'll actually tell you the opposing view, or sometimes you may have to use opposites. So we might talk a little bit about opposites right now. Um, the opposite of less than, 
I know some of you are out there saying, oh, greater than. No. The opposite of less than is actually not greater than. The opposite of less than is actually greater than or equal to. Okay, so it has to have, a, one of them has to have an equal to part. The opposite of greater than, remember greater than points to the right, is less than or equal to. And of course the opposite of equal to is not equal to. So what we saw here is the, uh, these ones over here are all alternative hypotheses because they don't have an equal to part. So a less than, a greater than, or a not equal to is always an HA. Equal to, or anything with equal to, a less than or equal to, greater than or equal to would be considered a null hypothesis. Though most of the time for a null hypothesis it's equal to. People rarely use less than or equal to or greater than or equal to. Okay, so let's take a look at these again. So we said we found our claims. Now so let's see if we can find the opposing view. What's the opposing view to the claim? Okay, well, let's read it again. Population percentage of people that have a side effects used to be 4%. Now we think it's higher. So it sounded like here that the, the, the opposing view was that it's 4%. Notice they never thought it was lower than 4%. They, always, they just thought it was 4%, and now they think it's higher. So it sounds to me like the opposing view would be equal to 4%. All right? So maybe our, our opposing view here would be pi equals 0 0.04. Okay? So it sounds like those are my two opposing views. The one they think is true was the higher, the greater than, so I put claim next to that. Okay. Now I should be able now to figure out what's the null and what's the alternative. Remember, the alternative is a statement that does not have an equal to part. A null is a statement that has an equal to part. So it has nothing to do with claim. It has to do with these signs. So the equal to one has to be the null hypothesis. So I'm going to write that down. That's got to be the null hypothesis. All right, let's do that. So this one would be the null hypothesis. Let me, I think I need a little more room here. Let's do that. Give myself a little more room.